Welcome to the Megan Claire Show. I'm a breast cancer survivor, patient advocate, and your host, Megan Claire Chase. I'm working with Encore to help share their mission, which is to give unbiased and comprehensive information for patients to empower and bring vetted trial options to all patients. Now, I am excited to bring to you a two-part series. This first part is about physical activity for patients in active treatment. The second part is about physical activity for patients post-treatment. So you're gonna wanna stick around. Now, I am thrilled to introduce to you our special guest, the amazing Dr. Corinne Jordan, who is a board certified general and trauma surgeon specializing in breast diseases and is also an award-winning top doctor for women four years in a row. Now, her list of achievements are insanely impressive, but we only have, you know, so much time. So without further ado, let's get started. Hello, Dr. Jordan. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I am great. We are so happy to have you here with us today. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for the invitation. So tell us about your holistic approach to wellness for your patients and why you feel that's important. Physical activity is really important for women for a number of reasons. Um, when you're talking about prevention, but also when you're talking about someone who has recently received a breast cancer diagnosis and is starting to undergo treatment, um, that is a trauma. And let's be honest about that. So there's a lot of impact that goes after that trauma. And it's very common for women to not take the time to take care of themselves during that period of time. Physical activity and regular physical activity can do a lot of things in terms of symptom management, anxiety management, um, and really help you get through the process of the treatment. Um, so head to toe, it deals with everything. It helps you sleep better. It helps you manage the stress and anxiety that you may be feeling on a day-to-day -day basis. It also really um, is the only thing that you can do to take the control back from cancer. You're gonna set time for yourself to do something that feels good, um, may not always feel good, but it may <laughs> have some better benefits down the road. Um, and it'll help you process and get through the trauma of a breast cancer diagnosis. So any little thing counts and any little thing counts and you can do well. Well, what kind of exercises would you suggest to patients during this time? Yep, it's important to pick something that you enjoy doing. It shouldn't be one more thing that you have to get through, right? So um, part of the intake for my patients is to figure out what are their hobbies? What do they enjoy doing? Um, typically, I recommend anywhere between 7,000 to 10,000 steps every day. And that sounds really onerous for a lot of people. So like I said, any little bit counts. So if they enjoy walking, then maybe they get out and walk, take a lap around the neighborhood after dinner. Um, every night. Maybe they do yoga because it helps with mind, body, stress management, and anxiety management. Maybe it's just dancing. Maybe it's just, you know, taking laps around the grocery store or the local mall. But any little bit counts. Okay. So what, what kind of changes, um, well, what kind of things can change during active treatment in bodies and in the way we perceive our bodies? Because I know many of us feel betrayed by, by our bodies and, you know, and certain type of movements are impossible or feel impossible to do. So there's a war that's raging between the mind and the body when you're going through treatment, you've recently had a diagnosis, you feel like it's coming after you or you're no longer a unified front, so to speak. And so um, finding something that actually makes you feel good and feel connected with, with your body is very important. Um, a lot of uh, patients really benefit from doing yoga, tai chi, movement-based exercises that are slow, incorporate meditation and breathing so that you can feel more connected. Um, you know, you can talk to women for days about body image, right? Right. <laughs> So it's important to try and pick and tease out um, little things or things that they may be struggling with because all of those little body image things are going to be amplified during treatment and during a, a, a breast cancer diagnosis. So 
um, you have issues with sexuality and femininity and what, what is beauty um, and all of those things just get turned. And so it's important to try and really work with each patient individually and find out what they need and where they're at. So what kind of things, you know, or what are ways that they can actually maintain this exercise and then ultimately make it part of their lifestyle? So little things, like little challenges and little achievements, they can add up over a week's time. So you're not going to set out and say, all right, now we're going to walk three and a half miles every single day while I'm going through chemo and while everything else is falling apart in my life. That's not realistic, right? right. Um, so usually that's when you call in your tribe, right? Maybe you get one of your girls to walk with you. You know, Maybe it's a lap around the neighborhood after dinner every night. Maybe they take turns walking with you to the library or to a park once or twice a week. Um, you know, every little thing counts. And so making small little attainable goals and trying to reach those small little attainable goals are great. Um, oftentimes, you know, if you can get a Fitbit or an activity tracker of some point, you can link up and create little teams and make a little competition out of it. Um, maybe there are little rewards for making, you know, each of these little goals over a weekly basis, but set them small and make sure that they're attainable. I really love to, you know, set them small because I think a lot of us, we feel very overwhelmed thinking that, oh my gosh, we have to do all this physical activity that, like you said, it's got to be every day and like for an hour. And so I, I like that, you know, thinking on a smaller scale, but still moving and doing what you can, you know. Yep, healing and going through the treatment process is a part-time job, right? And trying to manage all the symptoms that go through that become a part-time job. In addition to all the medical visits that you have to have, I mean, that is your job is dealing and getting through the cancer. You don't need one more thing. So right. maybe that one more thing is self-care. So what is it that you enjoy doing? Really, what is it that you need? Maybe that what you do need is just a short little trip down the street and back, a nice shower, and then a nap. And you know, just a little bit of physical activity thrown in there can go a long way over time. So what kind of things would you suggest to caregivers to help give the patient support? Aside from like their friends, you know, a lot of us, especially um, who might be in the young adult cancer community, um, like I was, and we had to stay with our parents for a while. What are some things that could, you know, help them inspire or, you know, help them give strength to the patient to move a little, even when they don't want to? Right. So breast cancer is a disease that doesn't affect just one person. It affects families. And so the impact is there's collateral damage for everyone that loves that person, and they go through it together. And I think caregiver support is really something that gets overlooked as you're going through these treatment plans. Um, people want to support the person going through it and everyone processes that trauma differently. Some will be there to step up and be with you at every chemo appointment and every doctor's appointment and all those things. And some people just don't know what to say. So they will maybe make themselves available, but they won't always know how to do it right. So that's usually where we need to start delegating tasks. So that's where the tribe comes in and the tribe is really important because that tribe is going to come up to you when you just want to crawl into your bed and hide for a week, pull you out and say, we need to dust it off and we're going to go for a little walk or we're going to go to yoga, or we're going to go to, you know, whatever it is that you enjoy. But that's the key. It needs to be something that you enjoy. It can't be one more onerous task. And as you're going through the treatments, um, things hurt. Your knees hurt, your long bones hurt, your back hurts, all these little parts hurt. And so you're going to have to really make an effort to work it out for those first few steps. But the payback is really important. Less anxiety, less stress. And you'll also get that collateral benefit is you get to bond with another person who really just wants to spend time with you. And sometimes they don't always know how to reach you. And so just sharing that space and sharing that vulnerability is really important. You know, I really, I really like what you said about um, creating that time with a person and they may not know what to say, but even that can be a comfortable silence and just a little walk or something, but the patient will just know that their tribe member is there supporting them. And so I think it's important that caregivers know that you don't always necessarily have to be saying something to be there 
um, for, for that person. Yeah, you'll have those people that always know what to say, the right things to say in the right moment, and thank God for those people. But a lot of people aren't gifted with that, right? <laughs> so just showing up and, and just being there is really important. All you have to do sometimes is just show up, and it speaks volumes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So as we wrap up, Dr. Jordan, what is some advice that you can give to patients in active treatment who are really struggling with the severe fatigue and the multiple side effects where it really does seem like they cannot move. Is there something that they can do even while lying in bed or lying on the sofa? Yeah, the stage advice that I have is don't try to climb the mountain in one day. Pick one thing to work on. Maybe if you know you really are feeling like the world is pinned on your chest, Roll out your ankles in bed. Do some calf stretches on a step. Just one or two little things that you can pick just to make some movement happen will make you feel better in the long run. But don't try to do it all in one day. You know, when you've got the world against you, so to speak, in your head, the last thing you want is your physician telling you you need to get out and run five miles every day. No one's listening to that. So <laughs> <laughs> Pick one thing and try and do that one thing, even if that one thing is just getting up and taking a shower, making sure that one thing works. Really appreciate that. You know, like it's like extending grace to yourself because it's like you want to do so much, but like you said, the patients, you know, our main job is to get through this and, you know, <laughs> come out on the other side. So uh, really appreciate that and that kind of sensitivity, because I, I think a lot of uh, doctors now kind of forget that part, and we feel the pressure that we must be doing something, or we're not doing everything humanly possible to beat it, so thanks for that sensitivity. Sure, you know, you're going through a cancer treatment, a cancer diagnosis, you already feel like your body is fighting with you. You don't need to add fuel to that fight. That fight will happen on its own. Anything you do to give yourself some grace or some space to heal, healing is a full-time job and it takes a lot of effort, um, but a little extra steps or movement in there will actually make you feel better too. Thank you so much. Now, I, 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 this has just been such a pleasure talking with you and so happy Thanks. that you are with us today. Thank you for having me. Well, everyone, you haven't seen the last of Dr. Jordan. Oh no. In the next episode, we're going to talk about exercise for those who've moved into the post-treatment stage and navigating the survivorship stage. Now, make sure you check out the resources on Encora AI by going to Encora.ai, where they humanize clinical trials. And if you want any questions or want us to cover something in particular, you know, make a comment below. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. I'm Megan Claire Chase. And remember, the more you know, the more empowered you will be. <laughs> Love that. <laughs>